We are joined as usual by Endersword and Ketrock over there on the sides and down below me uh, from the YouTube channel Artificially Intelligent. Go check them out. Uh, Geik, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for being here. So you've been doing some bot work from what I've seen. I've been watching a few of your videos uh, and we're actually going to talk about one, the most recent one you did tonight. Um, but what got you into bot making? Actually, I mean, I'm a software developer, so like coding is what I like to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't know there were StarCraft 2 bots until I saw, I think, Harstam video on YouTube. Nice. And uh, that's how I discovered the community. And it's uh, <laughs> it's really something that's perfect for me because uh, I've played like scripting games in the past where you just code to do some stuff. But like mm -hmm. with StarCraft, like you have full control over your environment and the platform is super well done too. Like, yeah, that's just how I got in and uh, I'm going to stick for a while. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, well, it, it is almost like playing a different game because instead of actively trying to make decisions and stuff, you just script a plan. You come, you know, tell it to do things and then let it go and see if it can do it, which I think is really cool. Uh, and we've got Ketrock. How you doing? Your bot uh, doing pretty good so far. How are you feeling? Yeah, yeah. I kind of threw my bot in at the last second for the submission, so I had no idea what it was going to do against Rubik Cubica. <laughs> So I don't think our two bots have actually ever played each other in the ladder. We've always been in different divisions. So oh, interesting. Yeah, my bot bit decided of an unknown, to the, the crap wild out of them, card. Apparently, <laughs> very cool. And then Ender Sword. I'm assuming you're doing well with your bunnies. I see a bunny in the background there. Yeah, they're always here to yeah. provide a little chilling. entertainment. Yeah, he's just chilling there, doing okay. I always like when we can see him. I'm telling you, you got to get a separate webcam. Yeah, no, I know. I want should it. Mount, mount one like on their little cage. And... Oh yeah. Yeah, and then they'll. No matter what, I'll have to hide the wire somehow. They will chew through the wire if there is a wire accessible to them. Yeah, that'd be bad. All right. Well, we're going to talk uh, about last night's games here. Uh, once again, thank you all for being in the Crown Club. And don't forget, tomorrow will be... So I, actually, if you're watching this, it will be today. Uh, the Bot Clinic, KOWIN's Bot Clinic, will be released. So keep a, an eye out for the link. And if you're an author, keep an eye out for the link to submit a replay of your bot and to get some advice and maybe some tips, get a little bit of help. Kaylin's a smart guy. He knows what he's doing. Uh, and he's got a cool little bot clinic going on for you, the authors. So definitely check it out on our videos page. Now wait, that is that posted on ES champ pro bots, right? I'm assuming yeah, we're going to go with yes. Um, Cause that is a pro bots <laughs> related content. So thank you once again for being here. Let's go ahead and dive into our first event here on the wire, where we talk about current events and, What's going on? And like I mentioned at the beginning of the show, our current event will be the awesome video made by this guy below me here. Uh, it's all about raycasting and and learning the map and, and trying to... You, you can describe it better than I could. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your project? And I, I know it's something authors have a lot of trouble dealing with choke points and ramps and stuff like that. So this is a pretty cool tool. Yeah, so as you said, basically, um, understanding the map in StarCraft is very important. And like as humans, we see it like right away. We can easily identify what a choke point is. And uh, when you fight with an army, basically, if your army is too big and doesn't fit into the choke point, you're at a disadvantage sometimes, depending mm -hmm. on where your enemy is at. So understanding these positions is uh, very important to fight. Or but an advantage. Just, uh, it could, it could yeah, it could be, be an advantage way, too yeah. if you want to defend a kind of point yeah yeah so it's an important thing to know yeah and there's other advantages just to because with these choke points you can split the map into different regions yeah um digital, which can help digital hmm? sorry. The, i'm sorry the digital different this video is going so fast the digital yeah, yeah. differential analyzer yeah yeah that's that uh, an algorithm to basically efficiently calculate collisions so when you ray cast you're trying to check if your ray is crossing to a certain cell and then there's different the naive like implementation is just a check every so often if you're in a new cell or something um but that's highly inefficient because you you can do up to like, i don't know thousands of checks if you want to be super precise but with this algorithm mm -hmm. you basically have to do only two checks uh to know which is the next cell that you're going to cross um and in the case of choke points you're usually interested in knowing the next like un unwalkable terrain um to figure out like the edges of the map so this makes it makes the whole algorithm super fast because you're going to be doing a lot of raycasting so 
if that part is slow, all the rest is super slow. And uh, I don't. Now, how do you choose the point from which you raycast out? Is it from a unit, from just a randomly determined point? How do you choose where it's, you know, yeah, searching so out? To perform the analysis, uh, I do this offline. So I do this uh, before we even start playing. I just start up a game and run my analysis on every map. And I load oh, this gotcha. data uh, when I play. But the raycasting in itself, I do it on every tile of the map. And so that's how I'm able okay. to know ah, the properties okay. everywhere in within the map. So, And in case anybody isn't aware uh, of how the StarCraft map is laid out, it is a big grid. It's a ton of little squares. Some are pathable terrains. The You've kind of seen the green and the red different cubes. Uh, green ones are pathable, means you can walk on them. Red ones, you can't go through. These are um, Now, these are your colors, these little zones. And I thought that was really cool, how you broke the map up into different segments so you can almost make like all right i gotta hold this zone so is it like if the unit goes too far out it's like all right come back in stay in your zone or something exactly and i want like in the future i'm gonna use this data to figure out like which targets are well defended or valuables and breaking it down into regions gives you like a better maybe tactical overview over uh, the map instead of treating like very precisely the map you can have a, a rough overview of the of the map yeah, this was a great video. Yeah, I highly recommend. Go watch. Uh, you do a great job explaining it uh, as well in this video. Very nice video. Um, what do do you guys know? What current map analyzing tools do you have access to? Uh, I I don't even know the current status other than what you've been working on. Like, what what do the bots use to determine where to go and stuff like that? Petrock, do you know? You well, might be able to answer. For the most part, they don't, right? They just kind of try to see them like oh, into a corner and dying and stuff. But uh, okay, yeah. now there's a there's a map analyzer that does uh, similar calculations to this, figures out regions and choke points. It's written in Python. Isn't um, it the in the Sharpie framework, or is it part of the Sharpie? No, it's cool. it's in Python, so a lot of the Python bots use it. Oh, that's Python. Okay. Um, uh, Eris uses it. Genzibot, I know, used it. Oh, okay. Um, I know within the Java framework, there's a, or not within the framework, but for Java authors, there's a couple of guys working on very, very similar things. They're always also always posting images of like, I got broken, this map broken into these regions now, and I've identified oh, two okay. points here. Yeah. So this is a very emerging new thing for the bots, just being able yeah, to or, read the it's map. It's coincidental stuff. that a lot of people huh. just started working on it all at the same time. Yeah. Oh, well, it uh, seems like that it's a logical kind of next step, right? We've gotten a lot of the ground, or you guys have gotten a lot of the groundwork done, just as far as units moving and doing things, and even doing things at certain points on maps, like where to put a base and stuff like that. Uh, but this uh, kind of seems like the next logical step to me, right? Just understanding the map better now, now that we have like, okay, we, we kind of know where we're at. Let's understand it better. Mm -hmm. So. I think that's pretty cool. It struck me as I, when I was watching this video, uh, my I happened to have the Roomba going around cleaning stuff up, <laughs> and it it struck me that it's doing basically the same thing, which yeah, is it's like it's, a form of it's got a little camera in front of it, and the, when you first get it, it does a few runs to use a like machine learning to learn your house, and then <laughs> it will actually present you a map, and it will present you where it thinks the room breaks are. So it, I think it's doing the same sort of like choke analysis to say like, this might be a door, this might be a hallway. This well, might kind be of a, draws a map yeah, as it goes, yeah, right? Yeah. And then it kind of label, like basically draws lines and it asks you like, am I right in this? And then you can give it instructions just do the living room, just do the bedroom, stuff like that. Yeah. So it's it, this, this struck me as a very similar thing because it will often go somewhere and just spin around for a little bit. <laughs> And I figured that's exactly what it's doing is it's got a camera that's looking for obstacles to map uh, everything around it and where to go next. Oh. So, yeah, it's kind of, it's definitely neat. I could see this being used. Like, I, I think we commented last season about like the reapers that were putting the little dots in front of itself to like pathfind. Mm -hmm. And so when I first thought, saw this, I thought, you were doing this from the perspective of every unit in every yeah, that's what i thought initially too. but yeah. it makes sense this way where the tiles are always in the same place do it from the tiles point of view then if a unit is there be like okay you're in tile number yeah. a, a12 and here's what to do so yeah that's a really clever way to i guess to avoid recalculating it 
twenty thousand times a game or twenty thousand times a second. Yeah. So <laughs> before that, then are the bots were the bots not able to differentiate between like pathable and not pathable, or were they able to see the grid kind of and know oh I can go here but I can't go here, kind of thing. You can see the grid. You just you did. There's no concept of choke points, for instance. You didn't know if you're like piling into a corner or fighting in a good angle or setting up a nice concave. Is this gotcha? Like you yeah. didn't know if it was a dead end or anything. So like step one to taking like really good fights is like realizing where the choke points are, uh, which you know as a human you think you just look. There's a choke point. <laughs> but from a programming standpoint, it's like it's actually very complex to get to it, as you saw in this video. I've seen a couple people working on, they're trying to work on a more visual way to play it with their bot. So it's almost uh, in a human-like sense, like what we see is what the bot sees. Isn't that kind of what Alpha Star did a little bit too? Just as far as like what's on screen kind of, or am I making that up? It, it played more with human limitations, I would say. Like it would box select units. It could only control things that were on the screen. So it would have to move the screen around, things like that. Yeah. Uh, our bots are not limited in that way. I can be controlling a unit in my main base and attacking in the opponent's enemy base on the exact same game frame. So, yeah. Very cool. All right, we'll go again to that is Artificially Intelligent is the name of his uh, YouTube channel. Go check it out. Some yeah, cool videos there. Great video. Uh, so what's your what's your next step then now that you've got your map analyzer analyzing and you've got it pretty accurate? Yeah, well, uh, I've got this like fancy tool now, right? Uh, my bot is not mm -hmm. using it just yet. And actually, I just lose to rushes. So I'm probably not going <laughs> to use it for a while. I got to, you know, defend those worker rush and the, those link floods first, mm -hmm. uh, which is what I've been working on uh, recently. So started scouting, you know, identifying threats and just responding accordingly because I just get crushed within five minutes for all bots that just do rushes. So. <laughs>